In this video, we're going to learn how to stand up a Kali instance on the AWS platform. First, you're going to want to navigate to EC2. You can either search for it or browse for it down below. Once there, you're going to want to launch an instance. Go ahead and search for Kali, the current and latest revision of 2019.2 is available here in the free tier, so go ahead and select. Continue. And if you just want to do the free tier option, if you're just experimenting or if you're doing more complex work, you may want to pick one of the larger paid options. Go ahead and click Next, Configure Instance Details. On this page, select Enable on the auto-assign public IP so that we'll have an IP we can connect to to manage the instance. You can just leave storage as the defaults. Optionally add tags if you have a lot of instances in your AWS platform. On the Security Group tab, you'll want to add another rule for RDP, which is what we'll be using to connect into this device. I'd recommend on the Source tab selecting My IP. What that'll do is allow only connections from your network or your IP via SSH or RDP to this particular instance. It'll be a lot more secure given the number of tools and things that are on uh, Kali VM. So go ahead and select My IP for both of those and then click the Review and Launch button. On this screen, it'll give you one last option to review all the selections that you made and then go ahead and click Launch. Here, if you don't have an existing key pair, make sure to create one and download it. If you do, just go ahead and acknowledge and launch your instance. Once your instance shows as running, you're going to want to click on the instance. Go ahead and get the public IP or DNS name. Then you're going to use that to run the following command to connect to the VM. You need to do this from the directory that you have your certificate file, or at least navigate and get a copy of that in the same directory or put the path. Once you connect, you're going to want to go ahead and set up a password for that EC2 user, a password that you know. Once that's, that password is set, you want to go ahead and run the following commands. I'll have these commands included in the uh, video notes. So that first command just gets the latest package updates. Second one is going to install some of the um, needed services for us to be able to RDP into this particular instance. In this particular case, if you get the following message, Go ahead and just make sure to sudo. That last install step could take you know, a number of minutes depending on the speed of your internet connection. But once that's complete, we want to go ahead and edit the um, RDP config file. What we're looking for in here, and this is truly an optional step, um, you don't need to make this modification if you feel like you got a pretty high speed connection. All we're doing is changing the uh, right there on the screen is 16 instead of 32 to help some of the performance when we RDP in. Let's go ahead and exit. Control X, Y to save that. Enter. So that committed that configuration. One other configuration we want to make is the allowed users. Currently the only allowed user to connect is console. We're going to be using that EC2 user that we reset the password on earlier in our steps. Again, control X to exit, Y to save, go ahead and commit that file. Last step, um, let's go ahead and start that RDP service. Type in that password for the user you reset earlier in the steps. And now we should be ready to RDP. So from your Windows machine, you'll want to go ahead and open the remote desktop application, put in that same public IP that you got from the AWS console, and go ahead and connect. 
when you connect, go ahead and leave this session set to xorg. You want to do ec2-user as the username and then the password that you set in the prior steps. Once you log in, you're going to have the full interface with all the various tools that Kali Linux has to offer. One final step, if it's going to be a, um, if you're going to use this VM or instance for quite a few things, you may want to run an update and upgrade to get all the latest modules and applications. I'll include that command in the notes as well. Once complete, you can terminate the instance. Just right click, instance state, terminate if you don't want to use it anymore, or stop if you want to not use it right now and use it at other times. Um, you can create other instances and practice attacks from your Kali Linux to, say, a Windows box. Just have to make sure that your security groups are set up to allow communication between those two. And I'll cover some of that communication setup in a separate video.